So today I want to talk about something that has been making serious waves in the developer community. It is called Minimax M2 and trust me this is not just another language model release. This one is special because it is specifically designed for coding and what we call agentic workflows. I have been testing it out myself and I am going to walk you through everything you need to know about this model, how to use it and whether it live up the actual hype. Alright so let me start by explaining what Minimax M2 actually is. This is a new open source language model that has been released by Minimax which is a Chinese AI startup. Now what makes this model interesting is not just the performance but its architecture. The model has around 230 billion total parameters but here is the clever part. It only activates about 10 billion parameters at any given time. This is called a mixture of expert architecture or MOE for short. Think of it like having a massive team of specialists but instead of using everyone at once, you only call in the specific expert you need for each task. This design choice means the model can deliver really powerful performance while keeping cost incredibly low and maintaining fast response times. Minimax is claiming some pretty bold things here. They say that M2 runs at only 8% of the cost of Cloud Sonnet while being about twice as fast. Those are huge claims, especially for developers who have been watching their API builds climbs higher and higher every month. But the real selling point is that this model was built specifically for two things, coding task and agentic workflows. What I mean by agentic workflow is tasks that require multiple steps like planning, execution, using tools and recovering from errors. Think of it like building an assistant that can actually go out and do things for you, not just answer simple questions. The model excels at things like multi-file code editing, debugging, running tests and fixing issues. It also performs really well in what they call long horizon planning which means it can handle complex tasks that take many steps to complete without losing track of what it is doing. According to the benchmark from Artificial Analysis, Minimax M2 actually rank as the top open source model globally for composites intelligence. It sits just below some of the big names like Claude and GPT models. But remember, this is completely open source and cost a fraction of what those models charge. Let me show you how to actually use this model because there are few different ways to access it. The easiest way is through open router which is platform that gives you access to hundreds of different AI models through one unified API. The cool thing about open router is that Minimax M2 is currently available for free on their platform. Now they might change this in the future but as of right now you can use it without paying anything. All you need to do is sign up for open router, grab your API key and you are good to go. If you want to use Minimax with coding tool like VS Code or Kilo Code, the process is actually pretty straightforward. Let me walk you through it. First you need to get a API key from their official platform or from open router. In Kilo Code, you go to settings and look for the model configuration section. You will want to add open router as a provider and then paste your open router API key. From there you can select Minimax M2 from the list of available models. The model identifier you are looking for is Minimax slash Minimax dash M2. Once you have got that set up, you can start using it just like you would use any other model in Kilo. This is actually really smart on their part because it means you can use Minimax M2 as a drop in replacement for Cloud in a lot of existing tools without having to rewrite any code. It also means that the model preserves something called reasoning blocks which are really important for maintaining context across multiple interactions. Basically, when the model is thinking through a problem, it generates these internal reasoning steps and keeping those in the conversation history helps the model perform better on complex multi-step tasks. Now let me actually test this model and show you what it can do in practice. I am going to use the official Minimax agent platform to build something real. Let me head over to their website. The agent platform actually has two models. They are lightning mode which is designed for quick responses and simpler tasks. Then there is a pro mode which is what you want to use for more complex long running tasks like full stack development or in depth research. 
I am going to ask it to build a CRM dashboard. This is a good test because it requires multiple components. You need data management, a user interface, different views and it need to actually work. So let me type in my prompt. I am going to say build me a complete CRM dashboard with customer management, deal tracking and a simple analytics section. Make it look professional and modern. Okay, so the model is starting to think through this. You can see it is breaking down the task into components. It is planning out what technologies to use, what the structure should look like and how everything will fit together. This is exactly what I mean by agentic behavior. It is not just spitting out code, it is actually thinking through the problem like a developer would. Now it is generating the code. One thing I have noticed about M2 is that it tends to organize code really well. It is creating separate file for different components which is exactly what you want in a real project. Let me scroll through what it is creating here. We have got an main HTML file, some CSS for styling, JavaScript for the functionality and it looks like it is even adding some sample data so we can see how everything will work. This actually look pretty professional. We have got a sidebar with navigation, a main content area and the styling is like clean and modern. I can see sections for customers, deals and analytics like it asked for. And yes, everything is working. The customer list is showing up. I can see deal information and the analytics section has some charts and numbers. What impresses me here is how complete this is. A lot of AI models will give you something that looks good but does not actually function properly. This dashboard is actually usable. You could take this code, add a real backend to it and have a working application. That speaks to the quality of the code generation. One thing I should mention about using Minimax M2 is that it does include these thinking blocks in its output. These are wrapped in special tags and they show you the model's reasoning process. For some use cases, this is actually really valuable because you can see exactly how the model is approaching problem. But if you are using the API, you need to be aware that these thinking blocks counts as output tokens, which means they contribute to your cost. The good news is that for most practical applications, the cost is still way lower than using some other tools like GPT or Cloud, even with the extra tokens. Let me talk about some real world use cases where Minimax M2 really shines. First, obviously the code assistant. If you are a developer and you are working on a project, this model is excellent at understanding your code bases, suggesting improvement and debugging issues and even writing entire features from scratch. Second. It is great for automation tasks. If you need to build script, automate workflow or create tools that interact with different services, Minimax M2 can help you design and implement those systems. It understands how to call external functions, how to handle errors and how to chain multiple operations together. Third, it is useful for learning. If you are trying to understand a new programming language or framework, you can ask Minimax M2 to explain concept show you examples and even generate practice exercise for you. The reasoning blocks I mentioned earlier are actually really helpful for this because you can see the model thought process as it works through problem. Now let me be honest about some of the limitations. First, while Minimax M2 is really good at coding, it is not perfect. There are some edge cases and less common languages where it might struggle. For example, some developers has reported that it is not as strong with languages like Rust or with specific game development workflows like Godot. It is still usable for those things, but you might not get the same level of polish as you would for more mainstream languages like Python or JavaScript. Second, the model can be verbose because it generates those reasoning blocks you might end up with a lot of output that you don't necessarily need. If you are just looking for a quick answer, all that extra thinking can feel like overskill. Some developers have mentioned that when you are using the APA, this verbosity can actually make the per task cost higher than you might expect, even though the per token price is still low. But for the vast majority of the developer task, Minimax M2 is going to give you results that are more than good enough and you will save a ton of money in the process. So that's it from the video. I hope you liked it and if you did, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.